Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing a review for the Amazing Spider-Man issue one. I believe this is a uh, gatefold cover, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but let's start talking about this issue. Uh, the first issue is Spider-Man without Dan Slott uh, being the writer, because he was uh, the writer for Spider-Man for uh, a long time. So it's interesting to see a new voice on on this character. So uh, Nick Spencer is writing uh, the comic, and Ryan Otley is doing the artwork who uh, worked on Invincible and Nick Spencer is no stranger to us uh, Spider-Man type characters he did do the superior Spider-Man and you definitely or the, not, I'm sorry the superior foes of Spider-Man he did not do superior Spider-Man uh, and you get to see a little glimpse of some of those characters that showed up there but Let's start talking about this issue. Uh, it is a little pricey, uh, this book. It is $6, but it, it definitely has a lot of story in this one. And we get to see where Peter's at. You know, Peter lost his job in this issue because of, of Otto, because he plagiarized his paper. Of course that's Otto, right? He gets, you know, he thinks he's superior than everybody, but he steals somebody, uh, somebody's work to get his graduate degree. And now everyone, everyone finds out and Peter doesn't know what to say because he can't say, ah, oh, that wasn't me. That was my not arch nemesis, doc, uh, you know, um, Dr. Octopus. So, and uh, Mary Jane's laughing about it and all that. Uh, so Peter's life, you know, is exactly where you would expect in issue one. Uh, it's the old Parker luck. It's not going so well. And something I really liked about this issue is that I feel like it brought a lot of old, but a lot of new into it. Because the beginning, and we saw this with the free comic book day book, uh, we get to see Peter has a new roommate, it's the boomerang, and that totally plays on the voice of what Nick Spencer was doing with Superior Foes, D-list villains um, mixed into this, and we also get to see that with uh, the Beetle uh, showing up again, and uh, obviously the big thing that happens here in this issue, which I loved but also scared of, is uh, Mary Jane uh, and Peter maybe making up and, and starting anew. And of course I love this because I'm a huge Mary Jane and Peter Parker fan. And, you know, as a Spidey fan, we all want one more day to not happen and, and be erased and all that. And we're taking steps to doing that. Now the negative towards this is that in Dan Slott's run, in that, uh, I guess, last two issues, we saw that Mary Jane kind of pushes away, and I feel like Mary Jane just, like, kind of jumps on Peter right away and uh, kisses him, and I felt like that was kind of quick from where we were at with the character, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't care about continuity because I'm getting what I want, so that's kind of weird. And I will say again, Nick Spencer was playing with continuity well because of the Dr. Octopus stuff and Superior Spider-Man, but maybe he's kind of picking and choosing the stuff he wants, uh, which I, I think... I guess every new run is allowed to do. Uh, and then also, you worry, because this is something that has happened before with Spider-Man. Uh, how many years has Marvel been trolling us, uh, saying, oh, Mary Jane and Peter is going to get back together, and they kind of pull it away. Uh, there's so many events and so many moments uh, that we get that wit. So... I'm cautiously optimistic, I, I'm, but there's so many little notes, you get Mysterio as a villain, you get, you know, uh, uh, there's one panel which I love where Peter's like, you know, something's missing, and then you get to see uh, Mary Jane's hand, you know, it's such a small detail that Ryan Otley and Nick Spencer both do in this, and then obviously the opener of this issue being about Mary Jane, and you don't open up a series uh, like that unless you want your series to be about Mary Jane and Peter getting back together and it seems like that's what's gonna happen and I'm so excited about that but again I'm cautious about it because Marvel has done this before uh, so for me overall I had so much fun with this I love this issue really like Nick Spencer's voice for Peter Parker I like the mix of Peter I like the mix of Spider-Man stuff with Mysterio I will say the issue is a little long uh, I don't think it needed to be a six dollar book I think some of the story could have been organized a little bit better with Mysterio uh, I felt kind of jarring just because like oh we got this Mary Jane scene then we get Mysterio then we get about the Daily Bugle so I felt like the tug of war uh with the timeline was a little weird with this one uh but overall had a really great time with the first issue and I can't wait to see where this run goes I'm stoked uh so it's not a perfect five star book but it's it's a four and a half for me and definitely pick this one up if you're a Spider-Man fan I uh 
definitely excited, like I said. So, The Maze Experiment Issue 1 gets four and a half stars. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic You Know. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also, description below, there are links for my comic book, Like Father, Like Daughter. And don't forget to like the Facebook page of Like Father, Like Daughter. And I'll see you guys later.